you know, Eric invited me and I said, wait, I work at a comedy company. Why are you inviting me? And I've just, so I, I got on a plane this morning from DC. I thought 24 million people's healthcare coverage was me taken away. I was drinking heavily on the plane. And then that didn't happen. And then I got here disheveled on East Coast time. And I've been crying. I've been very emotional. I'm not kidding. Titus and holy crap. Um, so I'm going to say some stuff. Uh, there's a lot of re reckoning and repair that I'm going to go through. This is going to be a very uh, impressive presentation. <laughs> You're going to be impressed with everything that I say. But what I'm going to start with, because, all right, how many people in here even know what Funny or Die is? Oh, OK. See, you don't live in Washington, DC. People literally are like, is that some type of nonprofit that protects people from dying? No, man. We're a comedy company. So uh, for those of you who don't know what Funny or Die is, we put together a really fun reel. Uh, we tell stories. We galvanize the American public, particularly young people, to care about shit, to care about our democracy. That is what we do, and this is a, a little fun video of what it is we do. You hurt little bitch. Yeah. Ninth grade had the shingles off the suede, the rainbow jacket, ball slang, glow, Bronx is only Django. Snap, be a golfer, stop, but that's what my yes, all right, fine, I'll give it to you, bro. Right. See, my percentage is a <laughs> Chicago. Heck, let's grab one of Cancer's testicles and pop it. to a better love, let the wings spread. It'll always come back, baby. The answer may surprise you. Come back flat, black paint. When I heard that, like, people actually watch this show, I was, I was actually pretty surprised. Ha. So I figure if we're going to run our businesses like it's the 1960s, I'm going to act like it. We have registered 750,000 Californians. Please welcome, for the first time on Billy on the Street, the First Lady of the United States of America, Michelle Obama! How are you, Mrs. Obama? I'm great, Billy. November 8th is Election Day, and I've got some great news. This year, you can look like shit when you vote. I guess who's got your back in this election? That's right, my basically home state, New Hampshire. This has been a lot of fun, Mrs. Clinton. We should stay in touch. What's the best way to reach you? Email? You've got mail. French fries are practically salads. Which is why I like mine with ranch. Now, let's all work together to make it that way again! Yeah! 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 No peeking. Let's go. You too. So that's what we do. So that's what we do. All right, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna try to be as quick as possible because I'm gonna. I have a lot of stuff to say. Um, so I used to work at the Obama White House. Uh, it was the White House without all of the gold. The new White House is a lot of gold. Um, and my job was essentially what I do now. My job was to tell stories, um, but they were hard to tell because I don't know if you know this, but. Uh, Democracy is kind of a hard thing to talk about and to get young people fired up about. And one of the hardest stories we had to tell was actually related to today. Seven years ago, yesterday, Obamacare was passed, right? Which was an incredible thing. But we had a challenge. Obamacare was passed, and then we had two years before enrollment started. And a story was being defined about Obamacare that was out of our control, and that story was this. 
$420 million in negative advertising, misinformation, hashtag alternative facts about what Obamacare was. And we had, oh, I don't even know what that is, what, 25 million in positive? And so my job was to try to figure out how, given this, we can get healthy young people to go on a website and sign up for healthcare. Sounds like fun, right? <laughs> that was my job. And they're like, well, Brad, I mean, you could just get celebrities and storytellers and writers and producers to help you. And I said, all right, that sounds cool. So that's what we did. We got like everyone. We got Gaga and Katy Perry and Pharrell and all these incredible people. And they told their stories and it was awesome. Thank you, Obama, because he's cool and they did it because Obama's cool. And I remember how awesome it was. One day we had 70 celebrities post and tweet and there was record traffic to a website. Do you guys remember that website? <laughs> it was called healthcare.gov. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty ugly. So after begging Gaga to post, this is what her millions of fans saw. And this is how I felt. So we had to figure out something to do. We, had to, we didn't have money. We had a shitty website. It was fixed in two months. Thank you, these incredible engineers came to uh, Washington and fixed the website. But we had to go back to the public. And I will guarantee you, Gaga was not returning my calls. <laughs> I was begging Gaga. So we had to do something big. We had to do something bold. And we thought, well, wait a second. Let's get crazy here. Let's use comedy. Why not? And so this is what uh, this is what happened. Another day, another problem. If they weren't fully ready, they should have delayed another year. Two weeks into the rollout of the Obamacare website, guess what? It still isn't working. Right, more chaos on the Obamacare front, as you may know. Oh, Obamacare is a failure. It's always been a failure, and it will not succeed. See? Okay, let's get this out of the way. What did you come here to plug? Have you heard of the Affordable Care Act? Oh yeah, I heard about that. That's the thing that doesn't work. Shh. Yeah. So I just want to take it one second before we see how this turns out. Um, we had to be honest, right? We had to be genuine. And the stakes could not be higher. This wasn't just let's get kids to go to a website and sign up. This was fundamental on the premise of President Obama. Can we make government work? Could government work? And if we couldn't get millions of healthy young kids to sign up in that first year of enrollment, Obamacare would have crumbled. It would have been exactly what Republicans said it would have been. We would not have enrolled 20 million people. And so I, being very dramatic before, uh, before we can go to the next video of, of what happened. It worked. It's boosted traffic to healthcare.gov by 40%. This video has actually gone viral into the very people that they need. Those kinds of media appearances are really going to define presidents. In 10 years, people are going to look back, and that's just going to be how it's done. 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 So we did it. 30, we got 30 million people to watch a video in three days. 40% uptick in traffic to healthcare.gov, and 90% of the people clicking through had never been to healthcare.gov before. And it was a game changer in DC. Everyone started realizing, well, wait a second. Why aren't we doing more of this? Why aren't we being entertaining with our political advertising? Raise a hand of people who think political ads are good. <laughs> no one raised their hand. So we started a new company. Uh, they fired I hired me, which was awesome. Uh, and this is what we've been doing. We've been, that's the name of the company. And we've been doing, we've done 25 campaigns. Uh, in a year and a half, and we're telling the stories, we're mobilizing people, young people, to take an action. And there are, you know, I don't want to talk about Trump, but I think we should do one thing and just remind ourselves of how badly uh, our institutions served us in this election. Go to the next slide. Uh, $4 billion were spent on television ads. Trump spent zero during his primary. And then he had this like weird thing where he created like face, 
fake news on Facebook. But the lesson here is he's meeting people where they are, right? He's doing it in a weird way, but he's doing it. And so we have to fight fire with fire. And Funny or Die is investing not with big celebrities. We are investing at the local level. We're investing in the stories that need to be told. And the story that I am most proud of in this past year, we can go to the next slide, is my friend Amanda. Uh, Amanda Nguyen, there's, I heard a woo. You know Amanda? Fuck yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, I work at a comedy company, I curse. So Amanda was an intern at the White House. She was uh, and is an incredible human. She's a Harvard grad, aspiring astronaut. And she is also, unfortunately, uh, one of 25 million survivors of sexual assault. And Amanda, when she was assaulted at Harvard, she told me this story. We were at a Starbucks, shout out to Starbucks. And I was crying in my coffee, um, not because of the assault itself, but Amanda recounting what happened after and the gaps in our justice system and how unacceptable these gaps in our justice system were. And she'd reach out to all of her Harvard professors and colleagues and ask them what she should do. And her professors told her, well, Amanda, write your story. Write your story. Let people know that this is unacceptable. And the hero that she is, she said, you know what? I'm going to do you one better. I'm going to write a law to fix this shit. And that's what she did. At 22, she wrote a law at the state of Massachusetts. And then she got a federal bill going. She got co-sponsors. But it was stalled. Because Amanda is just one incredible human, and she needed help. So she came to Funny or Die, which is kind of crazy. She came to a comedy company. Um, and we actually released her bill. We dropped her bill with a Funny or Die campaign, which is kind of mind-blowing if you think about it. Um, and incredibly, millions of views later, and uh, 100,000 petition signatures later, it worked. It was one of the only unanimous bills in Congress, in the House and Senate, that passed, which is an incredible thing. Uh, and I just put together a really short, well, I didn't put it together, but Amanda, because of our campaign, became a household name. And she's fighting for not just federal rights, she's now in 30 states because so many of these laws are at the state level. And we just launched her state campaign yesterday, which was an incredible thing. There's a video going right now, has 500,000 views, please go watch it. Uh, but I just wanted to share Amanda's story, uh, if we can go to the next slide, or video. Uh, she was just awarded the Young Woman of the Year Award uh, for her incredible efforts. And this is a little bit of Amanda. Our next honoree knows what it's like to fight for women's rights. Tonight, she is being recognized for her role in activism. This Harvard graduate and aspiring astronaut is, like countless women, a survivor of sexual assault. Instead of walking away a victim, she walked straight to Capitol Hill, working tirelessly with members of Congress to create the Survivor's Bill of Rights that Obama recently signed into law. She is Amanda Nguyen, and she has empowered millions of women to rise up with her. I'm a survivor. Uh, I was raped, and when I went to the criminal justice system, it was really broken. In some states, they destroy the evidence that's collected from the crime. I realized I had a choice. I could accept the injustice or rewrite the law. And we have. Amanda originated the idea for a survivor's rights package and urged me to incorporate such language in this bill. Very recently, President Obama signed the civil rights bill that I and my team wrote into law. And so, it's now the law of the land. <laughs> the most powerful tool we all have is our voices. And that's why I'm using mine to fight for what I care about.
Yeah, so I'm going to cry again. I haven't watched that in a bit. So I'm going to close. I'm already over time. Um, I have a complicated identity, as we all do. I'm a half black, half Korean son of Republican parents who voted for Donald Trump. Right? Like, the, the, the conversations that we're having are just incredible. And I just want to thank Eric. Can we give Eric Liu a round of applause again? I, I just want to urge everyone in this room, you guys are citizen leaders, you guys are incredible. You are never more yourself than when you're laughing. Right? And my father watches every one of my videos. He loves them. He doesn't agree with any of the politics. But he watches them, and he understands where I'm coming from. And so I urge all of us to think about laughter, to think about entertainment, to think about telling our stories, showing ourselves to the other side. Uh, because you know what? My dad's not a bad dude. And my mom's kind of awesome. And those millions of people that supported Trump, show yourselves to them. Do not retreat. And thank you to Citizen University for having me. Thank you so much.